it is time to take another fantastic expert view by Martin Lopez Cardoso, CEO of Circular Economy. And Circular Economy is a Dutch consultancy and a creator of global uh, circularity gap reports. Welcome, Martijn. And I believe you will run us through how circular economy has approached and framed the topic of regeneration. Thank you very much, uh, Anna. When I was a little boy, I biked from home to school through the forest. And I can still vividly recall the fresh smell of the needle pines, squirrel running over the bike path, taking in that fresh, cold air. And I remember pausing in front of this big tree and just feeling one with nature. So when I thought about this topic, and when I thought about our species, that's how we used to live a couple hundred thousand years ago. Completely in harmony and in part with nature, feeling whole. And then what happened? I think, Aline, you described it, Ken described it, Nancy, ultimately ended in the Industrial Revolution, where nature didn't become part of us, but became an input an input in the linear economy. Digging up stuff, fossil fuels, minerals, producing stuff, and actually destroying nature by generating a lot of waste and pollution. So, how can we reconcile those two worlds? The world where we used to be in, in harmony with nature, and the world that we're now destroying. So, at Circle Economy, the organization I'm with, we've always very much looked into the theme of regenerative. But I very much also agree with, with Ken. So, it's in the definition of the circular economy, we need to regenerate. But if you look in practice what's happening, it looks very much more like the picture that Ken showed. More like a recycling economy and people giving themselves credit for, you know, 10%, 50% uh, recycled content, doing maybe a little bit less uh, bad, but definitely not doing good. So I think this topic and putting regenerative front and center and also combining it with the circular movement is something incredibly important and incredibly powerful. And that's also why we decided as an organization about nine months ago to explore this topic of regenerative uh, economy and how it relates to circular economy uh, in more depth. And we partnered up with an organization in Germany called Respond and a uh, sustainable consultant called Systemic to explore this topic in, in more detail. And I want to share some of the, um, the thoughts, but also um, make sure you get access to those materials. So what do we do? Well, first of all, what does Respond do? So Respond is basically, they want to change the world by changing entrepreneurs and change makers. So they run programs, accelerators, workshops, but also a transformational program for leaders at all big events, so the B Summit, uh, Big Entrepreneurial, the Web Summit, uh, Brits and Bits and Pretzels, World Economic Forum, COP27. Um, and together what we did is we organized three uh, workshops and tried to bring together as many thought leaders on the topic. So Kate Rewa was there, Laura Storm was there, John Fullerton, uh, and a whole bunch of, um, of other people. And what we tried to address was three things. The first was, what is, what is actually regenerative economy? Um, and what's interesting actually also today, I think we have seen a lot of frameworks and a lot of wording, but it's actually very hard to really pinpoint it down, you know, what does it exactly mean? And I think there's also a little bit of a trap in that. 
because I think you, if you approach it very much from the mind, I think you're actually missing a major component of what the regenerative com uh, economy is and regenerative market is. Because I think it's not ju just something from the mind, it's also something from the heart. And it's also not only how you define and execute it in a very rational way, but it's also a bit more of a mindset. So we organize these workshops in a very, um, how would I say that, experimental way where we you know, had people doing drawings, bringing in the arts, bringing in indigenous people, and not really driving towards a very sort of hard outcome. So we don't have all the answers in the workshops, but maybe start off with um, the first question we asked ourselves, what is the regenerative economy? And we landed on the following definition, and I'll read it to you. <coughs> So, we said it's based on nature's law. So, I think the word nature is incredibly important. And also the patterns you see in nature. The second component is systemic health. So, making sure you reinvigorate. So, if you destroy something similar in nature, it dies. And then out of you know, that dying, you generate new life. So, that's quite... The other very critical component is it's self-organized. So I think here's where the system thinking comes in. Um, and there is also self-renewal in the process. Uh, so you're trying to build systems or organize systems that don't require a lot of steering, but are almost regenerative by nature. So that's the definition we landed on. I'm sure there's a, lot of, uh, a whole bunch of other uh, definitions. But that's uh, the one uh, we used. Um, then the second uh, piece is, um, uh, in the second workshop, we addressed what does success look like? And I think this is actually getting into a very fundamental question. And I think uh, Ken showed these nice graphs about you know, GDP growth and energy. And I would actually almost argue that a regenerative, maybe sort of pose as a question to the audience or for the panel, that a regenerative economy cannot be combined with our current capitalistic system. Um, because if you look at the principles and what you're trying to drive at, um, you know, nature doesn't have a limited growth, right? There are self-enforcing mechanisms. If a population gets too big, people die and you live back in balance or current model doesn't have those rules uh, and doesn't live by those rules. So ultimately, I think it's about a fundamental reset what good looks like. Um, because otherwise, I think you end up a bit more in adapting the circular economy with some components and doing less bad. Um, and then the third workshop we focused on is how do you apply uh, that in practice? Um, and maybe to address this last point, uh, I want to go back where I started. The little boy biking from home to school for the forests. And I'm sure you had a similar experience, sort of being one with nature and feeling you have to be part of it and have to protect that. And what we've seen with many leaders that a personal transformation is at the heart of a business transformation. And I'm probably preaching to people already have that happen to them. Um, but the more people go through that personal transformation and the more critical mass we gather, I think then change really will happen. Thank you. <laughs>